everybody, and welcome to another video. My name is Jack, and today I'm going to be talking about why Kanan Jarrus from Star Wars Rebels is the best Jedi of all time. If you're new to the channel, be sure to like, subscribe, and hit that bell for notifications, and join me down below in the comment section to share your thoughts on Star Wars Rebels and some of your personal favorite Kanan moments. Also, who do you think the best Jedi is? I would love to hear your take in the comments down below. So, 10 years ago this month, the first episodes of Star Wars Rebels came out, and Rebels is just a show that I think is awesome on so many levels. I love how the visual style functions as a tribute to Ralph McQuarrie's awesome concept art, there's tons of great characters brought to life by fantastic voice actors, the exhilarating lightsaber duels are super well choreographed, the mystical world building it taps into is really fantastical and inventive, and the message of recognizing that the galaxy is bigger than yourself and deciding to make a difference really resonates with me. It goes without saying that Rebels is my favorite TV show of all time and my favorite piece of Star Wars media outside of the original trilogy, so I wanted to make a video related to it to celebrate it having a full decade of existence. I also wanted to make something that applied to Rebels' significance within the greater Star Wars saga as a whole, and I've had this one video idea about making the argument as to why Kanan is the best ever Jedi since the channel first started, and I just haven't gotten around to it yet, so I figured what better time than now to finally do it. Though he may not be as brainy as Yoda, as cool as Obi-Wan, or as powerful as Anakin, Kanan Jarrus is the best Jedi in the entire Star Wars franchise. This could be seen through how in touch he was with the Force, his triumphant conquest of his inner demons, his exemplary mentorship of his apprentice, Ezra Bridger, and the way he balanced his Jedi stuff with his personal attachments. Kanan was raised in the Jedi Temple and fought as a Padawan in the Clone Wars, so very much early in his life he saw the flaws of the galaxy in the final days of the Jedi Order. Order 66 hit when Kanan was a teenager, and he was forced to live the low-key life of a minor on a mud planet. But when he sees all the crap that the Empire's putting people through, he realizes that he has to make a difference about it himself. By coming back in touch with the Force in an era with no Jedi Order, Kanan got to really think about what it meant to be a Jedi without the lens of war, politics, and glory the Temple had raised him to look through. The Jedi during the Clone Wars had become militaristic warmongers, and the Jedi who survived Order 66 really got a chance to separate themselves from this clouded philosophy and rediscover what the Order was about in the first place. Obi-Wan and Yoda, for instance, definitely became more in touch with the Force when they went into exile, but prior to this, they were still completely blind to the obvious darkness growing right in front of them. Kanan was able to come fully attuned with the Force and how it functioned without being naive to the re-emergence of the Sith, and this is only one of the many qualities that make him the ideal Jedi. For instance, he was able to fully tame his fear and get the best of it before his fear got the best of him. After Order 66, Kanan decided to go into hiding, only using the Force when he absolutely needed to and not telling anyone except his crew members about his Jedi past. But when him and the Ghost crew are rescuing a group of Wookiee slaves and they require a miracle to hold back the Empire, Kanan decides to reveal himself as a Jedi even though he knows this will put a massive target on his head. His bravery continues to be challenged through the threat of the Jedi hunting Grand Inquisitor, and Kanan starts to fear more and more of what could happen to his apprentice, Ezra. But it's in his final duel with the Grand Inquisitor, he proclaims that he has now overcome his fear when he declares, You're right, I was afraid, but now I know there's something stronger than fear, far stronger, the Force. He then proceeds to kick the Grand Inquisitor's ass. Not only does Kanan beat his greatest enemy by conquering his inner demons, but the Grand Inquisitor choosing to die rather than fail his master, Darth Vader, shows how Kanan, fighting the Inquisitor, is a metaphor for Kanan fighting himself. While Jairus thrives from facing Facing his fears and growing stronger, the main point of the Inquisitor is giving in to fear and suffering things worse than death because of it. The storyline fully concludes when in Season 2, Kanan enters a Jedi Temple hoping to find some insight about destroying the Sith. In a vision, he's confronted with the possibility that Ezra can fall to the dark side with a visual metaphor of him dueling a Jedi Temple guard, representing him struggling with a potential future. When he accepts the defeat to the guard, he is officially knighted and the guard reveals himself to be the ghost of the Grand Inquisitor. Because Kanan has come to terms with his fear, rather than fully running from it and acknowledges what the bad things are that can happen without being totally afraid of them, he finally gets promoted into being a Knight of the Jedi Order. As Master Yoda claims over and over throughout the Star Wars saga, fear is the path to the dark side and conquering fear is something that the ideal Jedi is supposed to do. Kanan teaches this message in a very gutsy, direct, and effective way, thus launching him into the pantheon of legendary Force users. Kanan was also able to train his apprentice, Ezra Bridger, and keep him from turning to the dark side, despite the fact that Ezra had a lot of anger inside of him. The strongest story attribute about Kanan and Ezra's relationship is the fact that it isn't Kanan being the wise old wizard who has all the answers, he has problems too. 
so it's very much him and Ezra on this journey together. There were moments in Rebels where Kanan wouldn't be right, and he'd always be willing to admit when he was at fault, and it helped him understand his Jedi mentors more. A quote that really demonstrates this is when he rephrases Yoda's iconic sentiment to tell Ezra that, I'm not gonna try to teach you anymore, from now on, I will teach you. If all I do is try, then that doesn't truly mean I believe I can succeed. I may fail, you may fail, but there is no try. It was in his modesty that he was able to acknowledge that he may not always be the best mentor, but he understood it was his responsibility to learn and grow as a teacher while Ezra grew as a student. Furthermore, unlike Obi-Wan, Yoda, or Luke, Kanan's guidance was able to keep his Padawan from drifting towards the dark side, though Ezra did get dangerously close. Following him, Kanan, and Ahsoka's failed mission to Malachor, the Sith homeworld, Ezra was starting to dabble in the dark side of the Force. He was hanging out with Darth Maul a lot, he was mind-controlling stormtroopers to make them walk off cliffs, and there were legit fan theories that he was Supreme Leader Snoke, that's how bad his dark side activities were getting. Instead of being completely naive and absent to this like Obi-Wan was, or trying to murder his apprentice in his sleep like Luke did, Kanan tries to be there for Ezra and verbally communicate with him as much as possible. When Ezra apologizes about all the crazy stuff that's recently happened with Maul and Kanan lets Ezra know that he's proud of him, they hug in one of the most powerful master and apprentice moments in the entire series. Whether it's Ezra's parents dying, a confrontation with Darth Vader, or the reclamation of Ezra's homeworld, Kanan was always there for his apprentice, no matter what. Even after Kanan's death, where Ezra's devastated, Kanan is able to reach out from beyond the grave and guide Ezra into resolve for a final lesson. Even though he was blind, Kanan could always see what needed to be done at the end of the day, thus making him a better teacher than any Jedi we see in the films. The last thing I'm going to talk about today that makes Kanan a revolutionary Jedi is his ability to balance his Jedi stuff with his emotional, personal relationships. In the Age of the Republic, Jedi were advised against forming attachments because it makes them more vulnerable to falling to the dark side. A prime example of this being how Anakin Skywalker fell in love with Padme Amidala and resorted to turning to the dark side in order to try preventing her forcing death ultimately bringing about the end of galactic democracy. However, Padme wanted to get help from Yoda or Obi-Wan at first, but Anakin was against this due to the fear of getting banned from the Order. But if the Jedi didn't have issues with Anakin being married, he wouldn't have made a deal with the Devil. So ultimately, it's the Jedi's rejection of attachments that led them to their downfall. Because Kanan was able to live a full and complete life outside of the temple, he had opportunities to meet a lot of new people and experience romantic relationships, friendships, and surrogate family situations. He formed a brotherhood with Gerizeb Aurelius as well as the old clone Captain Rex, he sort of became a father figure of Ezra Bridger and Sabine Wren, he had a romantic relationship with Harrison Dula, and he really cared for Chopper and Agent Callus as well. And this all goes back to why he was such a good mentor to Ezra. Ezra went from a selfish loner to a selfless Jedi who puts his life on the line to save his planet, and he wouldn't have realized the importance of being part of something bigger than himself if not for Kanan and Hera showing him so much love and care. Same deal with Sabine moving on from the mistakes and rejections of her past, ultimately rallying her fellow man Mandalorians to stand up to the Empire. And of course, after the destruction of Zeb Aurelius' homeworld, Kanan gave Zeb a new life on board the Ghost. Because he was able to disprove millennia-old norms and provide a new definition of what it means to be a Jedi, Kanan Jarrus is an absolute legend. Kanan was able to obtain all the attributes that make a perfect Jedi. He was able to conquer his inner demons, he kept his apprentice from turning to the dark side, and he came fully in touch with the Force without the veil of politics and war. But he was able to expand upon that. Being able to do all of this without a master to complete his training, and he balanced the use of the Force with a romantic relationship and surrogate family. Regardless of whether or not you see Kanan as the best Jedi of all time like I do, it goes without saying that he embodies everything a Jedi Knight should be, and more. Freddie Prinze Jr. was just amazing in this role, and Kanan is a character I very much admire and look up to, so I had a bunch of fun making this video. But that's gonna have to wrap it up for this video essay. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, YouTube, I will see you on the flip side, and may the force be with you, always.